Hi everyone, breakups are pretty hard. What are five ways you can make, up, make breakups easier on yourself? Tune in now and we will tell you as we pull the answers out of our butts. I'm Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com. And I'm Kathy Bertoli from TheIntimacyDojo.com. What's yours? <laughs> well, the first thing is to ask for help. And a lot, of, a lot of times we break up and we're very focused on our ex, and a lot of us have built our world around our ex. Mm -hmm. And it's real, this is a great time to reach out to friends you have now or that you might have kind of left in the wake of the relationship. And say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm sorry I was lost in new relationship energy or whatever. Yeah, and your friend's going to be like, uh-huh, yeah, fall in love, disappear. Now, break up, now you come back, crawl into your friends. And most of them will, most of the time, they'll be like, okay, because they've been there. Yeah, just totally own it. Be like, yes, I fell in love. I fell off the face of the earth. Now I need your help because breakups suck. Yes. And nothing's wrong. We have, there's like lots of interesting studies going on now that talk about um, what's going on in your brain mm -hmm. when you're in love and what's going on in your brain when you're, when you're falling out of love. You're getting like a, a withdrawal from the dopamine yeah. and all the stuff in your head. You are, you are completely normal when you're obsessing and can't get your ex out of your mind. Yes. Um, and that you're like late at night, you know, after two or three drinks, you're like, <laughs> I, should call. I should call them, I should call them. <laughs> your obsessive compulsiveness is normal because your blood chemistry is changing. Yes. Um, and this is the stuff you need to like, you can reach out to your friends um, and be like, listen, can you just make sure I don't call them? Yes. Now, if you're like me, because of smartphones, I don't know my closest friends or my, uh, I mean, even my partner, I don't have their phone number memorized. So I would recommend deleting your ex's number from your phone because it will make it harder for you to call them. Yes. Okay. And put your good friends on speed dial and call them when you need when you're feeling the need to call your partner because we've all been through this. Yes. And reestablishing those connections um, in the midst of a breakup, you know, with your ex, that's going to prolong the chemistry. And you want to kind of quit cold turkey as much as you can and go through your little withdrawals. Yes. And that's normal. We all do this for the most part. Another cool thing is by reconnecting with your friends, you help the primitive part of our brain really likes to have connection. It feels scared if it's alone. And that makes sense. When we evolved, that part of our brain evolved, if we weren't with our tribe, we pretty much were bare meat. Mm -hmm. So we get scared when we lose that connection with someone. So invite your friends to kind of fill up your schedule a little bit to, so that you have activities to do. So your, that part of your brain goes, okay, maybe I don't have that particular person who I really like or really had good connections with in the past, but I'm still getting some connection, some social interaction. So I'm not feeling so alone and abandoned. Mm -hmm. Other current tips for modern day society, go into your Facebook preferences and take them, either unfriend them, like you can say, listen, we're going through a breakup, I'm gonna unfriend you for three or four months, just so that I don't have your social schedule all up in my Facebook, um, or set the, uh, whatever the preference is, because Facebook changes every week, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Whatever the, and thank you, uh, Facebook. Um, <laughs> change the preference so that they don't come up in your feed as often. And just understand that when you wanna go check out their page, it's because you're obsessing. And that's okay. Like really that for yeah. me, in Not working with people, up. that's the biggest piece. Like you end up trying to, you draw out your withdrawal symptoms. Yes. Um, you guys can be friends, but be friends like, three or four months from now. Like honestly, like this is my best advice to make the, the transition the, the smoothest as possible. Do not call each other or see each other for three months. I always say six, but no one ever, I've never coached has been able to do six. <laughs> Trust me on this, it helps. And it helps you guys like kind of dis, disengage and unweave the lives you guys have been doing because some people break up with really good people mm -hmm. like you actually want to be friends it just wasn't good for you guys to be romantic even that I would say don't see each other for three months because if you're really destined to be friends you'll be friends later like it'll be easy to reestablish re it one thing that's helped me is to actually schedule in my calendar 
with the person. So during the breakup, we agree, I don't want, that's best for both of us if we don't talk for three months, but if we actually put something in the calendar, that gives my brain something to, okay, this much, not, like there's a, a, there's not an indefinite, we'll never see each yeah. other again. It gives my brain some place to relax, yeah. like, okay. Three months from now, let's have a check-in. You have a coffee or. And if you really need to get information to each other, okay, do it through your friend network. And this is all stuff as you guys are breaking up, you can set this up. You can actually set it up before. Reed has a great article on exit strategies on his website. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was brilliant. Having an agreement on how what would happen if you break up is just really powerful. Yeah, and that you can do while you're starting to fall in love. Not because it's some weird, oh my God, we're declaring or predicting the end of our relationship, but you guys are having conversations about what you would need to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in those conversations around breaking up, you figure out better ways of communicating while you're together. Yeah, it can actually add security to the relationship because you know every fight is at the end. Yeah. You've agreed to wait for the weekend mm -hmm. to talk it through or whatever, like, okay, it's not the end of the world. So breaking up is hard to do. It's okay. You're not supposed to be like, you know, black belt ninja at breakups. Mm -hmm. um, have your friends, I'm doing a recap right now. Yes. Um, have your friends, in case you feel it wasn't obvious to you, <laughs> um, or to you. Um, have your friends, source your friends to like fill up your social calendar to be the people that you drunk dial instead of your ex. Lower the status of the uh, profile updates from your ex or even unfriend them mm -hmm. for a couple of months so that you guys can go through withdrawals together. Yes. That's going to be really useful and leverage your friends. And then, you know, my biggest bit of advice is, is don't see each other for three months, which is going to be really hard, but it's going to be way wonkier and, and more hard, like trying to kind of see each other and be friends while you're still obsessed with each other. And, and it's just going to piss you off when they go out on a date with somebody else or they find out you went out on a date. It's just going to be weird. Yes. So I'm an advocate for very conscious cold turkiness. Yes. Have an ex exit strategy if mm -hmm. you can. And the last one I want to add is take care of yourself. Be gentle. Do what things nurture you. Like take a bath, you know, schedule a nice restaurant with a friend, whatever. Do things so that you feel taken care of and pampered a little bit. That can make a huge difference. Yep. I hope this was useful. Thank you. Please leave comments below. Bye. Bye.